a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just talking to you on my bag. Here's what you're going to need. Two, one yard, or if you're going to make a purse that has contrasting fabric, one yard of your solid fabric and a half of yard of your contrasting fabric, a good sturdy ruler, either folder, manila folder, or paper for pattern, binder clips, or tape to hold down your pattern, a good pair of scissors, or a rotary cutter, Elmer's glue, E6000 glue, rhinestones, and or glitter for accessories, and the main part is a retro phone receiver that works with your cell phone. Now before we start on cutting the fabric, we need to design our telephone dial. And I went ahead and cut this one out. I cut out another telephone dial that I'm going to use for the fabric for the actual dial for the purse and also the background. And as you can see, I've already cut the holes in the dial and there's the background and here are the dial pieces. I'll show you how to put that together now. So as I stated before, you're gonna need a sewing machine. Unless you can E6000 this purse together and it'll hold together fine because E6000 is a very strong glue. So you should be able to make a simple clutch, but maybe not something that you're gonna put a lot of stuff in. In order to put the whole bag together, I would recommend using a sewing machine. You're gonna put a bunch of weight in it, sew it. If not, it's gonna carry just a few things plus a little phone case, you might be fine. Here's the base, and here are the decorative pieces for the actual phone dial that's gonna go onto the base like this, and it'll be glued on. Then you'll take the cutout of the dial and you'll be gluing it on top of the decorative numbers. Now don't worry about how it's kind of jagged and not neat. Um, we'll have something to actually take care of that. You could use uh, rings or rivets, but I'm gonna use this little plastic ring. Now you know this little white thing is just not enough diva for Nita. And I had to jazz it up some. So I took the little white O-ring and I painted it with the glitter paint. It just wasn't sparkly enough for me. So I add a little bit of something to it and, and I'm going to E6000 it right on top of the dial. I'll E6000 the ring right on top of the dial just like that. Isn't that pretty? Now if you wanted to make this bag out of leather, you definitely could because it's gonna take less than a yard of fabric to cut this bag out. So as you can see, I put the bag in the, in the middle of the fabric. I put the back and the flap on the fold of the fabric. I put the side and the bottom on the fold to double the length because it's gonna to need to go around the bag to attach it to the back. I put the back and the flap on the fold because it's going to need to go from the front of the bag to the back of the bag and I'm also going to add two inches. I just thought about it. I want my bag to be kind of squared so the receiver can sit on it. So I'm going to add this extra inch here. So I'm cutting two of the D-hook strap to put on the side of the bag so it can hold a shoulder strap. I had extra fabric that was pretty much the width and the length that I needed, so I put it onto the fabric on the fold for long enough for a messenger strap. So I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut out all these pieces and I'll be right back. Now I've cut out all the pieces and I'm going to recut them in the contrasting fabric, which is the gray. Okay, all of the pieces are cut out with the black fabric and the contrasting gray fabric, except for the strap. 
I'm going to keep the strap black. But we're ready to start sewing. I'm going to plug my phone in really quick. And my husband keeps calling me and we'll find out what he needs. And I'll be back after I've charged. Well, as you can see while I was waiting for my battery, I got busy. So I went ahead and top stitched the dial. So we're gonna get to assembling the dial. Here is the base of the dial. I'm gonna put it in this plate because we're gonna get ready to use Elmer's glue. I took the time yesterday to test this and I was actually surprised that the Elmer's glue actually seals the paper. So I'm gonna take the paper and attach it to the base and then apply the Elmer's glue to the top of the paper to seal it. It's almost like doing decoupage. Yeah, I guess that's what you would basically call it. Decoupage onto the base. Okay, so I took the Elmer's glue and I applied it all over the decal and I'm taking the brush to spread it evenly. Okay, the next part is gonna be a little messy. You have to take the decal off and apply it to the background and then apply more Elmer's glue. So you apply the Elmer's glue and then you spread it evenly so it applies onto the background. This dries clear. Now don't worry about the Elmer's glue being uh, the white color because it's going to dry clear as well as the little red specks, you're not gonna see those. Now to finish off the dial, you're gonna take the outer part of the dial and you're going to apply it onto the base. Now make sure you even out the numbers and the spelling that you put on there so they show evenly through the holes. I'll do that just now. Now again, ensure that your lettering and the numbers are going to be inside the circles. Don't worry about the outside. We're going to cut that later. Now to make sure that everything adheres together, I have a styrofoam plate. Styrofoam because the Elmer's glue is not going to stick to it. So I'm going to put it on top. And I'm going to set my wine coaster on top of here. I'll do it upside down because it fits better. Okay, so trial and error. Um, I used this, but I noticed that some of the glue in the paint came off, so that means it's going to stick. Change of plans. So since this works so well, I'm gonna go ahead and sit the glass on top of the dial and let it sit there. I went to look for a piece of cardboard, but I found an old calendar that, I'm, that I deconstructed and I'm gonna use it to stabilize the purse. What's the difference between a purse and a handbag? Are they about the same? Or pocketbook? Well, I know a clutch is different, but anyways. Now, I'm really kind of thinking this up as I go along, so I'm gonna construct this purse before going to the machine by using the binder clips. Now I was folding the back and flap and noticed that my the cut was a little crooked. This is crucial, we need to straighten that. The reason why your um, lines being straight is crucial because when you get ready to put everything together, it won't line up right if they're crooked, so. Okay, so I don't know if you can actually see it, but the binder clips holding everything together pretty much constructs the handbag. At this point, ready to go to the machine. All right, I'm gonna give this machine one more try, but I'm gonna set this to a regular stitch, which is one, actually zero, and we're gonna start sewing. I'm doing the stitching, making sure that I'm holding the seams together. Okay, so we've sewn the front part of the bag onto the sides. Now we're gonna sew the back. Okay, we're coming to the end of our stitch line. Go ahead and finish the stitch. And, and cut the stitch. I can't wait to show you. So here is our bag constructed. And these are the flaps. We're gonna turn it right sides out and make the inside. There she blows! Open the bag. Look in the bag. 
oops, it's going to collapse because it doesn't have its structure. And there's the side of the bag. And there's the back of the bag. And the other side. And the front flap. Now uh, the front flap has a gray backing that I'm getting ready to sew on right now. And we'll insert the structure. Okay, so I was mentioning making sure your edges are straight and even. This right here could cause big problems putting this together. If you can see the way the presser foot is sitting at the edge of the seam, I'm gonna do the baseline or do the stitch but and cut this part off. If you can see the seam line and the extra fabric where it wasn't cut correctly. No! sweetheart okay so I am do what I say not what I do right now you see this line garbage I'll have to do something to correct it and I'll show you when I do it but yeah um, this would be an epic fail if you're not an experienced seamstress then this would be a little difficult to fix. Not hard, not impossible, but just difficult. So for me, I made sure to stop the stitch where it was uneven, and then I'll just cut this off, the excess off. I'm going to go around the whole entire bag and top stitch, front, back, and sides. Okay, so I have completed quite a bit and none of them recorded so I'm going to have to catch you up. I've constructed the inside of the bag where the cell phone will sit and anything else that you would put in the bag. Me, it'll probably be makeup brushes and makeup instead of throwing in the bottom. Also extended the flap. So the receiver will actually sit at the top here. And partially lined the inside of the bag. All of the structure will go on the bottom and in this pocket here of the flap. So this will be a hard surface and the bottom. Okay, I've created the D-hook straps and here is the shoulder strap and I'm doing a basting stitch on both sides before I put the pattern design on. The D-hook strap as well as the strap that holds the receiver on the top of the bag are both created. Now I'm doing the shoulder strap with the same concept. It'll have the design pattern on it. This is the shoulder strap and I've top stitched it along with the whole entire bag. I can't wait to finish this so I can show it. Right now the reinforcements are being set. The only thing left is to add the straps, put the snap on the phone mount, and put the dial on the front flap. This bag is almost complete. I'm so excited. It looks adorable! I still have the E6000, the covers. I'm not too crazy about how the numbers came out. Um, I'll find another way of displaying the numbers, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. Now the bag on the other hand, I have the snaps that I need to put on to make the receiver stay on the top of the bag. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with it so far. There's a few things that I've will probably change but it kind of gives me that circuit 1990 cell phone case. It's a little bigger than what I expected but that's okay too and the inside pretty good. All in all I'm gonna try to find me an old retro telephone receiver. I'm not too crazy about this one but it'll do for now. Now it's time because this bag is almost done and ready to wear to put the rings on the numbers of the dial with E6000 glue. Now while I wait for the dial to dry, I'm going to add the top and the bottom snaps to the phone closure. 
These snaps have a prong on one side, which is called the male, and an insert on the other, which is called the female. To apply, you puncture your fabric through with the male side. I'm trying to see if you can see that. Put a little light on the subject. I'll take a pair of scissors and make sure that the prongs have gone all the way through. Then you take the female side and you place it on top of where the prongs are through the fabric. The instructions ask you to use a spool of thread. Then you'll place the female into the top of the spool of thread. The back side of the snap fits perfectly in the top of the spool of thread. Now you pound to make it uh, attach. Now I only have one hand because I'm holding the camera in the other, but it's attached. I'll try to show you with the other one. Okay guys, I'm almost done. I'm so excited. I'm thinking about adding these straps um, and I have some rhinestone embellishments for the dial. Okay, so this sort of looks like a hot a mess, but I am gluing pockets and closures and neatly cover them so they can't be seen. But you won't be able to see them because they'll be in the inside of the purse anyway. I also went ahead and attached the Velcro. I have the female side down. I went ahead and attached the male side. Then when I'm getting ready to close the bag, I'll just remove the sticky backing. And because it's a girly bag, I added a bow to the top of the shoulder. Isn't it cute? It's a little much, I know, the most. So now we just need to wait for all this to set. And this bag is done. Yum! Say hey. This purse is on fire. The bling look at the bling I thought it'd be interesting to put a quarter on what? there yes it's sparkling OMG look at her isn't she beautiful oh my god total quarter detail yes yes yes, yes. yes.